So today we're going to talk about ITP and JWT, which stands for JSON Web Tokens. Stay tuned for that. Now to summarize everything, ITP is a feature or a middleware of OC set Laravel Shopify package. It is used to eliminate the issues related to browsers blocking third-party cookies. You'll most likely encounter this error if you use browsers like Safari. But I don't think you'll be using this once you start working with session tokens, because Shopify is already forcing Shopify apps to migrate from using cookies to crackers. And JWT, or Session Token, is used to authenticate merchants. With this token, you can determine who's using your Shopify app, because this token contains information about the merchant, like the shop domain, the API key of the receiving app, expiration date and time of the session, and so on. So in this video, I'll just show you how you can use the ITP and how you can get the Session Token using the App Bridge utility. So without further ado, let's open VS Code. And we're going to create a new project. Now, I'm not going to explain that much in this video. I'm not going to explain how to create the Laravel Shopify app. If you want, you can watch this video. Um, I'll put its link in the video description below. Or you can just click the eye icon right over here, I think. Yeah, that's that eye icon. So let's open VS Code and open a new terminal. And we're going to create a new Laravel app. So. Composer, and then create hyphen project, and then Laravel hyphen, no, slash Laravel, and then let's just do it in this folder. So dot, and this is going to take a while, so let's just wait for it to finish. All right, so while that's downloading, we can now open our env file, and here we're going to set up the um, variables. So create a new terminal window and open your ngrok, and then use the 8000 port. And we're going to copy the URL, so copy that, the secured one, and replace the app URL, and replace the database name with Shopify App DB. I think that's the right database. So if you don't know, I already have a database here in my PageMeme admin, so I'll, I'll be using the Shopify App DB. And I, I don't think I still have to migrate it since I already have the tables. But we can just do it again. So go back to VS Code and save your env file. Uh, you can just overwrite everything. And I think we're good now. So we can just close this for now and open our routes and web.php. And here we're going to set up the router or route. So we're going to set up the middleware. So middleware, and then we're going to create in here an array and supposed to be using the auth dot Shopify. And then we're going to point this to the route route name home. So RO and then name and the name is home. Save the file and we can just go back in here in our resources and the views and then welcome that PHP. And we can also open the app, the models and then the users.php or user.php. And here we're going to use, we're going to continue the welcome blade, but for now let's just continue here in the user. So use OC set, and I believe it's using the um, Shopify app, and then contracts, and then iShop model. I actually have no idea. So let's open this one. I believe there's a, yeah, this one. So we can just copy this. Go back in here and just place it in here. And we're going to use that. So implements, and then iShop model. And underneath of this, we're going to use that. So shop model. All right, save this and Next up is the web or the welcome, the welcome blade. And then we can just copy the following code and paste it in here. So basically what happens here is just you're getting the, um, the Shopify domain from the auth user. And then we're creating the app bridge. Just save that. It doesn't really matter if you set it up properly or not. And next up is the um, config. No, we need to install the OC set. So composer and then require and it's supposed to be using the OC set and then slash Laravel hyphen Shopify. And then while that's loading, we're going to create the Shopify app.php or the con config. All right, so I think that's done. We can just use the composer. Composer, I think it's PHP artisan. And then, uh, you know what, let me just open this. Um, this one. 
So artisan and then vendor publish and then the Shopify config. So replace everything with that command. And then we can just open that by doing this. And then we're going to set up the, um, the Shopify app name. It's supposed to be Laravel app. This one, 2021-04. And then the API key, we're going to copy the API key and then the secret key. This one too, paste it in here. Am I going too fast? Like I said, if you want, you can watch the previous video, but I'll just um, speed run this so we can go to the ITP immediately. So I think we can just proceed. We don't need to set up the access scopes or anything else. And I think we're good now. So we can just try and run PHP artisan and then do the publish. So migrate. And you should migrate. Yeah, you know what? We need to do the, the database. So it's supposed to be this one. And then paste it in here and we're going to add the PHP artisan migrate. So there's nothing to migrate and that's because we already have the tables in, in here. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, let's just continue and do the PHP artisan serve. And it should work. There you go. Let's open our Shopify app. Laravel Shopify app or Laravel app. And we haven't set up the Angrok yet. So I'll just copy this, go back to your app setup, open the app setup. And as you can see, we have the following errors. That's because we haven't set up the app URL yet. So paste it in here, replace the Angrok URL like so. Save the file or save the page or your settings. And we can just refresh our Shopify app. And there you go. As you can see, now we have the following. So you are example development store by shopify.com and let's try and open our developers window and then let's open the application and the cookies so we should have here the following um url as you can see we still we still don't have in here the itp so what we can do is to um, set up our uh, middleware so let's open our vs code and here in the web.php we're going to add the itp so ITP and just separate them with comma. Save the file and let's restart our server. And then PHP artisan serve. All right, so let's restart our Shopify app. And make sure that you have another Shopify store in, your, in, your, in a different tab because this will redirect us to the, um, to the ITP um, verification, which it will ask you to enable your your cookies. So there you go. So as you can see, now we have the following window. It says, enable cookies. You must manually enable your cookies in this browser. So to enable your browser or to double check if your cookies is enabled in this browser, what you can do is just open your settings and then open the privacy and security. And here we have the following cookies and allow uh, other site data. And here we can just allow our cookies. So we can just close this and then now the reason why it's still asking us to enable the cookies, and that's because we haven't set up our, our ITP or the settings properly. So if we click the continue, it will redirect the or it will redirect you to the main page and then it will verify if the ITP is valid. And then since it's not valid, it will proceed to the ask, which is enable cookie settings, and then it will just keep asking you again and again and again. And that's because we haven't set up the ITP settings properly. So Let's open the, um, the VS code and it should be the env file. And we need to add another variable. And that is the, we need to open the Shopify app the PHP and we need to do the following. So we need to set the following variables. So we need the Shopify route name ITP as well as the name ITP ask. So here just set this to ITP. And then the next one is the name ITP ask and set this to ITP.ask. Save the file and we need to restart our server. So artisan, PHP artisan, artisan serve. And then we can just refresh our apps page. We can just close this. And this time our Shopify app should not redirect us to the ITP ask page. It should remain in the app page and continue and give us the UR example development store at So if we open our Shopify app, that should give us that. 
There we go. So as you can see, now we have the following. So you are example. So we can open the developer's window again and open the application. And this time, we should have the following ITP cookie. So there we go. As you can see, we have the following cookie or value. And it will verify the Shopify app. Our Shopify app will keep verifying this. If this is valid, then we're going to be redirected to our Shopify app. Otherwise, it will redirect us to the um, ITP page, which will create a new ITP and then set the ITP cookie. So there you have it. That's the ITP. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the JWT or the JSON Web Tokens. Now, to get the session tokens, what we're going to do is to use the app bridge utilities. So we can just go back to VS Code and open our welcome.blade. And here, just above the following script tag, we're going to create another script. And then for the SRC, we're going to use the HTTPS and then unpackage. So unpkg.com.com .com slash at Shopify slash app bridge app bridge hyphen and then utils and then I think that's pretty much it so the next thing we're going to do is to use the following package so we're going to create a new variable in here and we're going to use the um, app bridge utility so we can just call it app bridge utils util and we're going to use the window is equal to window and then we're going to use the app hyphen bridge hyphen utils so make sure that you end this with semicolon and then next up we're going to use the actions to get the session token so underneath of everything just before the closing script tag we can use or we can create a new variable so constant is going to be a constant variable and we're going to call this get session token and we're going to use the app bridge app bridge util and then we're going to use the get session token get session token let me just double check this so get session token get session token and that with semicolon and this is a function so we're going to use that as well so um, we're going to create a new variable called let or just let and then this is going to be session token We'll call that session token and then we're going to use the get session token and we'll pass in here the app now if you're wondering where i'm getting this app it's already been used here so app you can just use that here as well so by default there's already an app in in, in the package of oc stat laravel shopify app so you can use that so if you don't want to use that you can obviously create a new app so i think there's a function called create app create shopify app and then you can just pass the api key and then the host name or the host so i think that's how you can create the shopify app otherwise just pass in here an app and i think it's going to work anyway and we can just console that log the value of session token and that will be the session token of this app so session underscore token and then end that with semicolon and if we save that and open our shopify app we should have here in our console the um, session token. And then we can verify that using the JSON web token.io or JWT.io. So as you can see, we have the following promise. If you open that, as you can see, we have the following promise result. So this is your session token. So you can copy this by right clicking the um, string and then selecting the copy string. And if we open the JWT.io, we can scroll down and paste the following token here. And as you can see, we have the following payload, but this not done yet. We need to pass in here our secret key to verify it. So as you can see, it's saying that the, um, the signature is invalid. So to make it work, we're going to use the secret key. So copy your API secret key, go back to jwt.io and paste it in here in the um, 256-bit secret. And if you paste that, as you can see now the signature is verified and sorry about that and there you have it so we have the following uh, result we have the url we have the audience the subject the expiration and then the best before or not valid before and then the issued ad and so on so basically yeah that's the result so i believe you can use this session token in the bear header 
So if you want, you can just create. I'm not sure if that's actually how you do it. You need to pass the bearer and then you need to concatenate the session token to that bearer header. I'm not sure if that's how you do it. I'm still figuring out how to properly um, authenticate the signature using your Shopify app. And I believe the um, package Laravel Shopify is still on the works or still in the progress, um, setting up JWT session tokens. And I believe there's also a middleware that you can use, which is called auth token. And if you use that middleware, it's not going to work. It's going to give you the response, which is missing authentication token. And that's where I am stuck right now. And I don't know how to fix this currently. So I'm still working on this. Maybe in the future video or in the next video, I'll create another video talking about this. But for now, that's ITP and then JWT or JSON Web Token. So there you have it, guys. That's how you do it. Now, my advice for you, at least this is what, I'm, what I can say, my advice is to just go over here in the OCS at Laravel Shopify and just keep communicating or just communicate with other developers. I'm not doing that. <laughs> just go over here in issues and just look up. If you have an error, just, just look up in here and search for your error. If you have errors related to JWT, just search J JWT or session token and there should be a post related to that. So at least that's what I do. I just search as much as I can and then I combine everything and I just apply to my code and just wish that it works. But yeah, anyway, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or if you think I made a mistake or if you think that I'm doing it wrong, please let me know in the comments below as well because I have no idea if that is right or that is wrong. I'm just doing what I can to make my Shopify app work. So yeah, if you have any questions, again, just do it in the comments below. And if you want more, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell button so you won't miss my future uploads. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.